So with Cam Reddish now being on the Knicks, I'm going to start a new series called Can't Knox the Hustle. And this will be volume one. And the reason why I'm calling it this is because in due time, without both these teams making drastic moves, we'll see that Knox for Cam Reddish will almost be a wash due to the circumstance, not skill sets of each player. And we got to kind of break this down layer by layer because there's a lot of domino effects of this trade. It kind of puts pressure on other guys to perform so they can get their payday versus Cam getting his. It also kind of opens doors for Leon Rose to make more moves as our bench is pretty long. We have a lot of guys on this roster and minutes are going to be scarce. It also kind of puts pressure on Tibbs. Let's see how he manages the rotation. Now, Cam Reddish's situation in Atlanta was very similar to Knox. Now, I'm not talking about the skill set. I'm just talking about the team being crowded up and just the overall fit wasn't really quite where they thought it would be. Now, for those of you that are watching the video version, as you can see, Cam Reddish's career stats and just his overall three years in the league, his first season was during the bubble season, which, you know, it looks like a typical rookie season. But the key thing is look at year two, 2020-2021 season. That's when the Hawks went out and got a lot of free agents. So this team changed drastically. And as you can see, he only played about 26 games. So a lot of new guys came into the roster and he was injured for most of the season. So he didn't have any time to gel with the new expensive pieces on the roster. Guys like Clint Capella, they made the trade for. Brogdon, they signed him through free agency. The same thing for Gallinari. And let's not forget, while he was hurt, guys that were already on the squad started making the names for themselves. Guys like DeAndre Hunter, Kevin Herdier, who also earned a contract after last season, and also John Collins, which he also earned a contract. So not only guys were earning minutes and making a name for themselves, they were actually also getting paid. So this is one of the reasons why Cam Reddish eventually wanted out. And to my fellow Knicks fans, this situation should sound very familiar because we've seen the same thing kind of play out with Kevin Knox. We went out and got brand new guys. We drafted brand new forwards. We started paying guys. And eventually, the writing is on the wall. You can see yourself getting phased out. So with that said, the Knicks do need a guy that could potentially fit that 3 and D role at the number three position. That's where Cam Reddish comes in. And the Hawks, due to the fact that they play a lot faster than us as far as pace, because we're dead last in the league in pace, them using a guy like Kevin Knox who can shoot from the perimeter doesn't really play defense as well, but their pace kind of makes up for that. He kind of fits into what they do well. And Kevin Knox was asked about his fit in the Hawks, and he specifically talked about the pace of play. And that's not ironic. Once again, the Knicks are dead last in the league in pace. Kevin Knox here. Welcome to Atlanta. Thank you, thank you. Well, let's start there. The opportunity for a fresh start, a new start. What are you looking forward to most about joining this group and what you think you can bring to the table? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, the offense is great. I mean, they play at a fast pace, and that's kind of something I've loved doing pretty much my whole life. I mean, in high school, college, I always love to play fast and, and then the open floor. So I know that's something that they do really well here. And uh, just really getting to play with a lot of talent on the team. I mean, so I'm just really looking forward to getting pushed, getting a great opportunity to get to know the guys and just really building chemistry. So pretty much for his whole basketball existence, Knox is used to playing on an open floor and with pace. And that's got to be a blow to hit the professional level and be on a team that's consistently at the bottom tier among all NBA teams in pace. But now he gets to be in Atlanta where not only do they play fast, but they play with a familiar face that he's used to playing with, aka Trey Young. And this is very similar to Cam Reddish and RJ playing with each other now in the professional level in the NBA. It's like that saying, one hand washes the other, but they both wash the face. And we're seeing that exact scenario play out right here. Well, I think again, I read that he said something about looking forward to playing with an all-star mm -hmm. point guard. So does that mean you and Trey, you, you looking forward to getting out there with him? Kind oh of yeah, 100%. Or? Me and Trey have known each other. We played against, uh, against each other since our freshman year high school. So we're really good people. Um, my family is good family, uh, good, close with his family as well. So, you know, he's a great point guard. I'm really looking forward to, you know, just playing with him, learning from him and getting an opportunity to play next to him. Did you say freshman year of high school? Freshman year of so high school. So that would have been Oklahoma. Uh, Is that right? He was in Oklahoma, but we played a lot mostly on the Through circuit. Through AAU and stuff. Okay, yes, I was going to say, that does it. Okay, I yes, got it now. Yeah, I was in Florida, so he was in Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, so that's more, a long way to go circuit. for a high yeah, school most, Mostly on the circuit. <laughs> So you guys see how scary it is that Cam and Knox's situation is very similar. 
both guys playing with guys that they played with before i mean knox knows trey young so well that their families know each other and we'd even get up to the minute situation that's going on with both players being on their new respective squads the hawks run a really tight rotation and if you look at cam reddish on the knicks you could easily name nine guys that's going to get minutes before him and we're not even talking about derrick rose coming off an injury we're not even going to include him you could look at rando Evan Fonier is going to get minutes over Reddish. Alec Burks, Noel, Kimball Walker if he plays. RJ Barrett, Toppin, Quickly, Grimes, Mitchell Robinson. I mean, you just look at this like, wow, there's only 48 minutes in an NBA game. And you already got easily nine guys that's going to be eating up minutes. Where does Cam Reddish fit in all this? And I see some of my fellow Knicks fans were actually surprised that Cam Reddish played five minutes against the Clippers and then he got a DMP the very next game against the Cavs. That should not surprise you. That's how limited the minutes are. There's not enough minutes to go around like that. And that's even before Derrick Rose comes back. And some of y'all might be thinking, okay, maybe Reddish could get minutes at the four or just a different position outside of the perimeter. And that's not going to happen because he's not a really a good rebounder. So best believe he's not going to be competing for minutes against Nerlens Noel, Taj Gibson, and the other forwards that we have. So that's not gonna happen because he's not that kind of rebounder right now. So as of right now, Kevin Knox for Cam Reddish, it's looking like a wash due to the circumstances of each team, not each player's actual skill set. And to be honest, a lot of the Nick fan base, especially being on the East Coast, is stuck on that NCAA Duke promotion of Cam Reddish. A lot of you guys are living off of that. You guys love his name because of that. And that NCAA free marketing and promotion that they give a lot of players before they get into the NBA, that's a underestimated thing that people really be overlooking. That shit is very powerful. I mean, look at Zion Williams. But Cam Reddish, best believe his name before he got into the league, he was a big deal, especially even in high school. I mean, just listen right here to one of the best shit talkers in the NBA, Anthony Edwards of the Minnesota Timberwolves, talk about Cam Reddish's reputation before they got into the league. Who the, hardest, who the hardest person you had to guard? Be honest, man. Could be when you're freshman. Oh, Cam, Cam Reddish. Thank you. I told oh, you. Everybody gonna say. Everybody gonna say. When did you play against Cam? Everybody gonna say Cam Reddish. I ain't gonna talk about that though. <laughs> you try, I ain't trying to violate with Bro, you. Bro, he gave me 44. When did you get 40? 40. 40. <laughs> 40. <laughs> How many he gave you? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gave him 40. Never mind. 40. <laughs> Well, he didn't get me for it. He gave like the person who guard him, but Ooh. I'm still on the team, yeah, so yeah. I'm a part of it. I ain't even what you gave her, but it was more than 40 points. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I can't read different, bro. Nah, he, he different. Cold. Yeah. Cold. Yeah, he cold. Yeah, he different. But once again, just to put things into proper perspective, a lot of the Knicks fan base, a lot of their hopes and angst about Cam Reddish really comes from his reputation before he got into the league. It's not really what he's done while he was in the league. Just some of that branding and promotion some of these players get coming up from the amateur circuit, it's it can be underestimated. It's, it's really unreal. And the NCAA is pretty much the Don King of it all. But one thing, my fellow Knicks fans, that we got to take into consideration when we get past the hype is that upcoming extension that Cam Reddish will be eligible for next season. And with us already having a tight rotation and just so little time in between him and his next extension, it's either we're going to pick up his team option and let him become a restricted free agent or this leads me to believe that Leon Rose might have other moves up his sleeve before this year's trade deadline. Now we got a deep lineup with a lot of young players at the end of that bench with some potential, but we don't have minutes for everyone. And when you combine that with two of the first round draft picks that we have, along with Detroit's second round pick, because that team is not gonna be a good basketball team going forward. So that second round draft pick, it might be valued a lot higher. When you combine all these things, we could be making a move to get RJ and Randall some help because having just all this potential and his good young talent on the bench, but a limit of just 48 minutes a game, it just doesn't make any sense. The Knicks aren't really in a position right now to be going into the draft over and over and over. They have enough key pieces along with draft picks and young players like RJ who need key contributors around him. They're in a nice position to keep moving up and making trades. That's why Leon Rose and World Wide West is here with all their connections. There will be no need for the Knicks to keep crowding up that bench with first round draft picks. We're not going to be able to pay everyone and fit everyone in a rotation. And it's about time now that we see the magic that Leon Rose and Worldwide West is going to work on them damn phones.